If you've spent any time around the Portable Entrepreneur channel here, you probably already know that I highly recommend SEMrush as an all-in-one SEO tool. They have so many in-depth features for our SEO, from keyword research and tracking your rankings, competitor analysis, backlink analysis. It's great for local SEO and a lot more. But today I wanna to focus on one of their specific features, and that is I wanna look at how to run a full website audit. Now, if you're not familiar with what a site audit is, a site audit is simply a process for looking at how well your website is optimized for search engines. And this is what is really gonna help you find any issues that are keeping you from ranking higher and gaining more visibility. So I like to think of this as a doctor checkup for your website. This is gonna tell you just how healthy your website actually is because you can't always see all of the issues that are going on just by looking at it. So when I do a website audit for any website, there are two tools that I will use. The first is Google Search Console, which is something I've already covered in depth here on the channel. And the second is always SEMrush's site audit. Now to do this, I break this down into five steps. The first is that we are going to use SEMrush to run a site audit. You're going to put in some basic information and then it's going to run the audit for you. Now the second step is to review the results. Once we have the audit back, we need to take a look and see how healthy the website is and what issues we're actually dealing with. Now, once we have the results back and we know how healthy or unhealthy our website is, what issues there are, now we need to prioritize those issues so we know where to start. The fourth step will then be to fix those issues. And the fifth and final step will then be to check the results by rerunning the audit. So let me show you exactly how to do this. So let's go ahead and run an audit. You'll be able to find the SEO audit under the on-page optimization and technical SEO section here. And that will bring us to this page where we can go ahead and enter the domain of the website that we want to run the audit for and click start audit. So this is going to bring us to some basic audit settings. And for the most part, you can just leave this as is and just go ahead and click start site audit if you want to. If you are a little more technical, you understand some of the jargon and you want to play around with it a bit more you can adjust these settings here as well. Now there is a checkbox to send an audit every time an audit is complete, and you can set a schedule if you want it to run every week for you, and that way it will automatically run the audit and then notify you of the updates. You can come in and take a look on a weekly basis, or you can just turn that off if you want to. So we're gonna go ahead and click Start Site Audit, and we're gonna give this a minute here to run. The site audit is now complete, so we can go ahead and click into the project to see the results. This is going to take you to the overview page. So this is simply just giving you an overview of what the audit has found. So the first thing you wanna take a look at is this box here in the top left corner called Site Health. So this is giving you an overall score of how well your site is performing out of 100, with 100 being the a website that is absolutely perfect. So we're not doing too bad here, but the next section we wanna look at to see if there's anything that we could do to improve that score further would be this top section here. And you see there are three categories. We have errors, warnings, and notices. And that is really how we are going to prioritize the issues that we work on. We want to start with the errors first. Those are the most urgent, the most pressing issues. And then we will move on to errors. And although you can see that there is a high number of errors that can make you panic all of a sudden, sometimes there is just one fix that is needed because the warnings are showing this one error on many, many pages. And then lastly, these are notices. These are definitely less urgent things, but something that once we've fixed up the errors and warnings, if we wanna to continue to even improve the site further, then we can take a look at the notices as well. Now the next section here below is called thematic reports. And as you can see, this looks at specific technical SEO issues. So we have crawlability, site performance, internal linking, and so on. And by clicking into each of these, we're gonna be able to get more detail. So if we think that our score, for instance, is not high enough in site performance, even though it's looking good in this particular audit, then we can click through to see what specifically we can do to improve our site performance. Down below, we will see some of the 
top issues that the site is facing. So we have some uncompressed pages, blocked internal resources with robots.txt and so forth. And if you don't know initially what some of these issues are, I'm gonna show you where it tells you what these issues are, how to go about fixing some of them. So the next thing that we want to do is we wanna pop over one tab to the issues tab. This is going to give us a list of all of the different errors that are on the website here, all the errors, warnings, and notices as we looked at. So you are gonna find all kinds of different issues here from crawlability issues, redirect issues, sitemap issues, security issues, internal links, on-page markup, and performance issues. But if you don't know how to fix all of those, don't panic. What we're gonna do first is, as I said, we want to prioritize these issues. So right now we are on the overview screen here, which shows all of the errors and issues, but we can sort specifically by errors, warnings, or notices. We always wanna prioritize those errors. And as you can see here, we have a couple here at the top. All of these in green, you see 000, that is a good thing. We have passed all of these checks and we don't have any issues with all of these potential issues we could have. So we're doing pretty good and we don't have any major issues. So we have a couple of conflicts here and as you can see, it says there's five of them. So if we fix that one issue, that's gonna resolve five of the issues. If you don't know, what an issue means or how to go about fixing it, you will see a link here that says why and how to fix it. And if you click it, it is going to give you more issue about what this actual issue means and then how to actually go about fixing it. And you can always click through to get a more in-depth article that talks about it. And then this is where you can choose to either go through the process of fixing the issue. Sometimes the issues are very simple and straightforward and sometimes they're more complex. So at times you may want to get a developer to come in and fix those issues if this is something you're not familiar with. But next up, you can click on warnings. As you can see, this particular site has more issues that are warnings, but we wanna start fixing these, even though there's a longer list, after we have taken care of that error. So as you can see, since we had a high number of errors, this one has over 1,500 issues with blocked internal resources. So likely just fixing that one issue is gonna resolve all 1,500 plus of those issues, which will bring the overall number of issues way, way down here. And again, we can look at how to fix that, but a robots.txt file looks like we just may need to adjust that if we have accidentally blocked a resource that we did not want to. Uh, we have some uncompressed pages. We have some low text to HTML ratio. Some of these though, like six pages, they don't have enough text within the title text. So maybe a title is just too short. So even if you don't have experience with technical SEO, we just go make the titles longer. And clicking through to this, this is going to tell us very specifically what page is having that issue. So we can see, okay, the FAQ page is simply called FAQ, so it's not long enough. So could we better describe that so someone could better understand it and the search engines can better understand it? Uh, we have a page that doesn't have an H1 header, so can we go in and update that? So. Uh, we have an image that doesn't have an alt attribute. So some of these are very small and simple, very quick issues. And then we have notices finally. We have nine different notice issues here. Some of them have hundreds of examples of this particular type. So we can go through these one by one and resolve some of these issues. But again, after we have already resolved all of the errors and warnings. Some other nice things that you can do with a site audit here is that there are some additional tabs that run across the top of your screen here. So we have crawled pages. Crawled pages is going to show you all of the pages that have been crawled in this particular site audit. So the number of pages that will be crawled is depending on the package that you have. And so what you can do is if you wanna work per page instead of per error or per warning, for instance, you can come here and you can start by looking at a specific page. What I recommend that you do is sort by the number of issues, and this is going to then give you the page that has the most issues and allow you to start there. So you can see this particular page has 67 issues, this one down here has 58, and as we continue to drop, we have less and less issues, and then we'll start seeing that some are actually just marked as healthy, they don't have any issues at all there. So that's a good way to be able to work by page versus by error. So one of the reasons you may wanna do that 
that is if you have a page that is ranking pretty well and it's bringing in some good traffic and you want to make sure that that one continues to perform as good as possible that is a good one to do or let's say you are working on updating a page or better optimizing that page you can go ahead and take care of the technical seo issues that may be impacting that individual page as well now you also have a statistics tab here and this is giving you an overview of some of the technical seo issues and this is some of the ones that were shown there on the overview tab that we first looked at so for instance this is going to show you the number of pages that are showing in your site map which is currently 366 and it will show you based on the pages that were crawled only 60 percent of them were actually found in that sitemap so you may potentially want to update that sitemap there as well and it talks about markup only 10 percent of the pages have no markup so we're doing pretty good here with markup but there is a little bit of room for improvement if that wants to be worked on as well and it says only three percent of pages have only one incoming internal link so we want to check here to make sure that there are enough internal links so it looks like the site is is doing pretty good here so we don't want to have what are called orphan pages those are pages that exist by themselves they are not linked to by any other pages they don't link out to any other pages we want to make sure that we are connecting our web pages where it is relevant now as you continue to run your audits one of the things that i mentioned our final step is that we want to actually check the results and the way that we do that is by fixing some of the issues that we've looked at and then we come back and we can go to this button up here in the top right and we can click rerun campaign and this is going to take us through the exact same process where it is going to run the site audit for us all over again and it is going to check to see have we fixed any issues and have any new issues appeared since the last audit. So maybe you're doing this a few days apart as you fix some issues. Maybe you're doing this a week or two apart. And what will happen then is you can come over here to compare crawls. It is going to show you what your site looked like the first time around compared to what it looks like now on this latest audit. So starting with your health score. Has your overall health score improved, which is definitely what we wanna see, and then has the total number of errors changed? Has it gone down? Hopefully, but has it come up? Have new issues presented themselves? And it will score us all the way down on all of the different issues that it will be looking for in a site audit. And then we can also check the progress page. This is going to put it more on a graph view for you. So you can see the number of errors, the number of warnings, notices, depending on the day of the audit. And so the more audits that you run, the more you're gonna to start to see here and gather some more information. So that can be a great way to see, are you progressing? And what are the results of your efforts running these audits and fixing some of these issues? So hopefully this has given you a much better idea of not only what a site audit is, but also how to go about running one, even if you haven't done it before, and how to be able to see exactly what the issues are, prioritize them so that you can fix it and see your site health improve, which will hopefully help translate to higher rankings and more visibility in search engines. If you have any questions at all about running a site audit or using SEMrush, don't hesitate to leave a question down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.